G'day everyone and welcome back to the Wixie 500 YouTube channel. This video is a kit review and a build guide for a model I put together about five years ago, back in 2017. Uh, it's from a company called Rosso, which didn't exist for very long. And it's a 143rd scale version of the Ferrari 643 Formula One car. Features plastic and metal components, uh, lift-off bodywork, and some unique engineering that means it can be built with very little glue. So this is the kit, uh, original box and contents. Uh, but before I get into the build, just a quick word about Rosso Corporation. Uh, it was a jump at ease company, which according to Wikipedia, was founded in 1992, produced a handful of models, but soon went out of business following a fire at its factory that destroyed everything. So there's never going to be any reissues of any of their, uh, their kits. For reference purposes, this is the real car. The 643 was introduced part way through the 1991 Grand Prix season. Uh, both drivers, uh, Alain Prost and Jean Alesi, scored a number of podiums with the car, uh, but it never actually won a race. The kit can build either car, uh, but I elected for the number 27 Prost version. And while I planned uh, an out-of-box build, I wouldn't call it a straightforward build because there were a number of fitment issues with the kit. Anyway, it ran a three and a half liter normally aspirated V12 engine with a seven speed semi-automatic gearbox, pushrod suspension all round and uh, carbon fiber chassis. Now these are the, uh, the parts unbagged. The kit's mostly injection molded plastic. And as you can see here, the bodywork is in red, the seats in a tan color. A lot of the mechanical parts and the floor up the top here are in black plastic. And there's also a plated sprue of sort of an aluminium finish. Uh, rubber tires in this kit and the monocoque is actually a, a cast metal piece. So technically I guess it's a, a multimedia kit and the suspension, the top and bottom arms are, um, I don't know if it's photo etched or, or if it's pressed, but anyway, it's very, very strong, very solid and deco sheet and, uh, and instructions there as well. So I started off obviously cleaning up uh, parts, test fitting and so on. And as you can probably or possibly see here, there's some fairly serious gaps between some of the parts. The nose cone had two little pieces on the side, which didn't really reflect what was on the real car. So I ended up filing these off as I uh, cleaned up the seam line on the nose. Uh, you, and again, I don't know whether it shows up on the video, but the front wings and same with the rear wing, there was sort of like a carbon weave molded into the wing itself. So it was not a shiny surface, but it did have a bit of a look of carbon fiber. This is test fitting the engine, gearbox and suspension assembly. And it's a bit difficult to see here, but get, there's big gaps here, all right? The fitting was something seriously wrong, basically. So kit is a bit bizarre. On, on one hand, um, it has some really clever engineering in it that holds all of the pieces, or most of the pieces anyway, together uh, with a few small screws and you don't really need much glue at all. But on the other hand, some of the clearance tolerances are, are way off and the fit is far too tight in some areas. So with the suspension and gearbox and getting this to fit, it just wouldn't go together. There was a lot of filing had to happen, but as you would have seen on the previous photo, there were big gaps in other areas of the, of, of the part. So while it's in some respects a nice little kit, obviously there's some uh, clearance issues. The photo etch suspension you can see here, um, it's pre-bent and pre-colored. So other than cutting it out of the fret, there's nothing, well in theory, nothing that you really need to do. However, uh, the little tabs on the ends of the lower arms here, and there's the one on the side here, they are way too large to fit in the hubs for the uh, the rear uprights. And same with the holes in the top arms, the hole is too small. So you either need to drill that hole out quite a bit, or what I elected to do is I thin down the pins that are in the wheel hub so that, um, that this, this would fit on. But there's quite a bit of work to get the parts to fit the suspension arms. I primed the body with Tamiya Gray Primer and then sprayed it with Tamiya TS8 red, uh, just running it through the airbrush. This is the first photo after just the first run of red, so it's a little bit dull here still, but after a couple more coats, it sort of really started to, uh, to brighten up. This is just some detail painting of uh, a lot of the other parts. I just did a whole batch of semi-gloss black and then uh, put detail on hand painting, uh, the springs and the uh, shock absorbers and so on and so forth, intake trumpets, etc. And then this is the rear end assembled after I'd been filing various parts. I forgot to take photos of all of the, the pieces that I had to adjust, but once the 
things were filed down, assembled quite well. There's a screw on top here that holds part of this together, and that screw ends up being hidden by, a, by an oil tank covering. And then this is the same piece flipped up the other way. So this is the underside, and again, there's a couple of small screws here that hold all of this together. There's no glue involved here. And this piece here is got a hole in it so that it mounts properly in the correct position on the floor, and again, gets held in by screws. So this is the monocoque screwed to the floor. So just some of the initial assembly started. I hand painted the heat shielding in the floor, and in hindsight, I probably should have masked and sprayed it or used bare metal foil because you can see the brush marks in it. But also, I should say, it looks far worse here in the photograph than what it does in real life. The radiators were just uh, sprayed an aluminium colour and they fit into the floor, but I also put a bit of glue in there just to make sure that they don't come loose. And this is the uh, the chassis and the engine screwed to the floor, um, just waiting for the front springs to be pushed on. There's a hole here and a pin here, uh, so that this piece that includes the push rods basically just pushes into place. Uh, again, no glue required. This is just the nose cone sitting on the back here, which just basically sits on top of the uh, the nose box here. Air intake is just a press fit, so that, that's removable. You can remove it to show the in intake trumpets, but there's no roll hoop structure underneath the air intake. And again, this is a bit of a mock-up. Once the body had been polished and prepared, just at this stage just need some decals and the wings. Uh, and the mirrors put on to, to finish off the assembly. Um, and, and this picture just reminds me of, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the Spectrum Formula Ford that's built in Australia. Just the curvature of the airbox and this nose cone without the wings just reminds me of the Spectrum Formula Fords. Anyway, uh, wheels and tyres were pretty straightforward on the kit. Just paint the rims, sand the tyres down to give them a bit of a roaded look is, is what I prefer to do. And then the tyres just pop on the rims and, and pop the decals on. So nothing particularly difficult there. It includes the branding on the rim itself. So branding for the tyres and the rim, which is a nice feature. This build was the first time I used polishing compounds. Um, I used Tamiya's fine compound followed by their finish. I could have probably polished it more aggressively, but I was worried about burning through the paint and without experience of how much paint's actually on the thing that you can polish off, um, I didn't want to get to a point where I had to respray it. So it's come up okay, but it could probably be a little bit better. So now the suspension has been fitted on the front here and the seat belts are simply a sticker that goes on. I use bare metal foil around the lower edges of the fuel tank which is as it is on the real car. The kit didn't call out for any of that, but I've just put that on because uh, it's, it's easy to do and it was on the real car. The exhaust pipes in the kit are not very good. They're basically just a clump of molded plastic. So someone who's got some skills with uh, jewelry skills of putting together um, piping, for example, might be able to make up something better. Once the decals were applied, it was straight into the photo booth. Uh, I don't have any clear coat on this model, uh, and taking photos in the booth, it just looks like Rosso's pre-built factory version. The Rosso company did do a number of Ferrari's V12 Formula One cars, the 642 and this 643, and they did them in both kit form and ready-built form. So I'm just referencing photos of what I've seen of the, the ready-built one. And also they did these kits in a number of different scales as well. In fact, I think there's a 1 8 scale 643, but very limited issue. And this is the finished model with the body off. So while it was an out-of-box build of the number 27 Prost car, uh, as I said earlier, I wouldn't call it a straightforward build because there were lots of fitment issues, mostly around the suspension. The other parts typically were a little bit of a looser fit, but the suspension needed a bit of work to have the um, the hubs and things fit onto the, onto the suspension. And one of the areas that was a, a problem was the apertures for the rear axle uh, were not lined up through the back of the model. So you couldn't just put the rear axle through. So what I did, I cut the axle in half and assembled each side independently. And the advantage of that is that now each rear wheel has just a little bit of negative camber on it that would have otherwise not been achievable with a solid straight axle. And I think it makes for a little bit more of a realistic stance. Stay online for a bunch of still shots and close-up photos of the model uh, with the bodywork fitted and removed. If you're liking these videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. And don't forget to check the website uh, or social media channels, and the links are below in the description, for the latest build news and workbench updates of models I've been working on subsequent to you watching this video. Anyway, until next time, cheers.